Hello, welcome to Sonos Studio. Today I'm going to talk to you about the heat tools that I use in this Back to Basics number three video. These are the kinds of soldering irons that I use in my work. This is a fixed head soldering iron. I think you can see that okay. It just has one point on it. You can't change this one. These soldering irons are really good for cutting out applique with synthetic fabrics, particularly when you're working with bonder web. You can be quite dexterous with the way that you use your soldering iron, just like a pen or a pencil. They're really very useful. I tend to work more often with the Fabric Master type soldering iron. It has a, a, a nice thick handle, which I find easier to grip now in my elderly years. <laughs> it also has a screw in tip, which is useful. So you can change the ends if you want to. Obviously, when the soldering iron is cold, you wouldn't do this when it was hot. So the great thing about these soldering irons is that they will come with a variety of ends, which are great fun. You can also get one which is a stencil cutter, which I find very useful. Now, when you're working with soldering irons, you do need to think about how you're going to protect yourself and your table from them, from rolling around and cutting through your wires, all kinds of things. Some of the soldering irons will come with a very basic little wire stand. I would just throw that away. Um, I would um, buy yourself a terracotta flower pot. This is quite a small one because I use these for traveling, but you can get larger terracotta flower pots, not plastic ones because they will melt. <laughs> um, so always pop your soldering iron in your stand, which is a terracotta flower pot when you're not using it. And it's also useful to have a cardboard tube with some wire wool in it to clean your soldering iron. So every time you put your soldering iron back into your terracotta pot, clean it. It makes a big difference and your soldering iron will last longer and your tip will be more accurate when you use it. This rounded tip on this particular soldering iron end is very useful for if you want to do some transfer foiling onto Bondweb because some of the sharper points will actually cut through the foil um, and make a bit of a mess of it. Whereas this lovely rounded end will just give you a lovely medium sized line. When you're working with a soldering iron, you need to have a firm, hard base that isn't gonna move, that isn't gonna melt, that kind of thing. So I just use the backside of a baking tray from the kitchen. It's just easier. You can have a dedicated ceramic tile in your studio or wherever you work but I can never find them when I need to do something. So I find just using the back of a baking tray works really well. It's firm enough, it's hard enough, and it's light enough to move around. Um, and they're flat to store as well, which is great. These soldering irons are 18 watts. You don't really need anything hotter for the fabrics that you're going to be melting through. So you don't really need a very powerful soldering iron. You will always find the information that you need, the wattage and the voltage, somewhere, usually on the handle of the soldering iron, as you would do on the base of your iron or anything else. So just check the wattage. You really don't need a very powerful one. As I say, 18 to 20 watts is all you need power-wise. These are the heat tools or heat guns that I use. The one I tend to use most of all is this little fold downable one, it's got two speeds, a high and a low and an off in the middle. It's about 300 watts and it's about all you need. It's really good for melting things like Lutridor, synthetic fabrics that you've transferred, dyed, that kind of thing. It's a handy tool to have. When I'm teaching in Australia and New Zealand and I put a heat tool or heat gun on the materials list, this is what the students usually come in with because that's what they're called in Australia and New Zealand. They're called heat guns or heat tools. Um, these are quite big, heavy and quite blowy. They also have a wider nozzle where the heat, where the air comes out. So um, it, they tend to blow things around a bit more than these that have a smaller end. 
So it's up to you. If this is all you have and you don't want to buy a dedicated heat gun, a smaller one, then these are fine. You just have to be a bit careful with them. And also your arm will start to ache after a while because these are quite heavy. They are beasts. They are industrial sized tools, but they do work. And these also come with two speeds that you can just see Whoa, in the camera there. The nice dirty end. Don't get your nozzle too close to your work. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the other kind of um, heat gun you can get. Um, this is a torpedo style one. This is very old now, this one. So the heat guns that you can usually get now are this kind of thing in Europe, certainly. And both of these are about 300 to 350 watts. And that is plenty of power. 